you see? I don't know if you guys saw the Washington Post editorial on on Bolivia the other day, which is just like it's stunning that it came out in the Washington Post after it was the Washington Post that broke the news in the United States that the OAS report on the Bolivian election was bullshit uh, back in 2019. Um, that they can then turn around now and repeat outright falsehoods, uh, saying that Evo Morales stole the election in 2019. This was in the Washington Post editorial last week. Um, and it's like, guys, you know, which is which, which is particularly absurd because uh, the the original OAS report, uh, the evidence they were using that the election had been stolen in Bolivia uh, to justify the military coup was exactly the same kind of evidence that like Rudy Giuliani was talking about and that like uh, that the the capital rioters were worked up about. Yeah. You know, with we, one we, big we, difference, we, though, that well, the OAS well, well, yeah. never even—they never even alleged that they that the um, that Morales had lost the election. They just suggested that he didn't win by a large enough margin. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, yeah, that's true. That's true. Right? That is an important difference. But like you know, but it was the same kind of thing where they were saying, "Oh, you know, they're like the the percentage of the vote he got in this area is like implausible, you know, given the yeah. demographics of it. And, and yeah, then like the second you started like looking at the fine print, even that stopped making sense. But I mean, it's the exact same kind of bullshit that American conservatives were talking about after yeah. uh, after the election here, which makes it particularly amazing that like the house organ of mediocre American liberalism, uh, the Washington Post, would be totally buying into this when it comes to Bolivia. Yeah. Well, similarly, I mean, similarly, uh, New York Times, I had this, I had this um, screenshots of this, uh, if we got into more about this. But um, when now that uh, Inez is, is, you know, in jail, and they have like, a, they're only holding her for four months, they want to like do an investigation, they want to make sure that she can't, you know, like sick people on them while she's getting the investigation, like they want to make sure that you know, and, and the investigation is over the massacres, you know what I mean? But then the New York Times turns around and goes, released an article a couple days ago or, or a couple weeks ago where they're like, well, she doesn't pose any immediate threat specifically to this government. I don't understand why she's being jailed, which if you look at the New York Times coverage of Trump and Trump supporters and the Capitol riots, they, they're very much like, this is a coup. Trump even if he's not elected, can just turn around right now and sick everybody on the Capitol. This is unsafe. I don't feel safe right now, like all this stuff. And somehow when it's Bolivia, they don't understand how somebody, you know, not jailed could, um, in an actual coup situation, could... No, well, 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 that, well that's the right. thing too, especially, because it's <laughs> like, look, I mean, the Capitol, you know, Capitol riots is bad because the cause was bad and because they, you know, they were being riled up with lies and, you know, et cetera. Uh, you know, but, uh, and a lot of creepy, you know, fascisty people there, but like, uh, but it's also, uh, nobody actually, um, like there's one cop who, uh, may have died as a indirect, uh, result of something that happened in the riot, a little unclear, honestly, uh, they, like the original story was they'd been bashed with a fire extinguisher, that since been walked back. Uh, they, uh, they they say now there's you know there's no evidence of blunt force trauma. It's it's possible that a chemical irritant you know like had side effects that complications that led to him died. Uh, if so, that might have been friendly fire you know because because there were chemical irritants being sprayed on both sides, and that's the one guy right. Nobody seems to have intentionally killed anybody except for the the one person who was shot by the cops. Uh, the big, the, like the zip tie guy, which I certainly bought into at the time. I thought, oh, look, there's a guy with zip ties. He must have been planning to kidnap somebody. Uh, that's a bartender who was there with his mom. I don't think he was planning on doing, a, you know, like doing a kidnapping plot. Uh, you never know, and, mom. We could take one of them. <laughs> and, and he had... And and he, and they have now withdrawn that charge because you know because they said he he, don't, he didn't bring zip ties to the Capitol like he picked up some zip ties that had been dropped by a cop and had his picture taken, uh, and, and so none of which is to say that these are you know good people. I mean these are uh, terrible, disgusting right wing people uh, who who had like a very bad cause. They were they were trying to yeah. overturn what was in fact a legitimate election that had been lied to and told as a stolen election. But also it's like okay. Uh, it's like a, like a fairly in the greater scheme of things, a fairly minor riot. 
uh, compared to in Bolivia, an actual successful military coup where they massacred supporters of the deposed democratic government. And so if all of these like uh, mainstream liberal organs could see value in locking up everybody who was the Capitol riot, the idea that they would like, then turn around and say, um, no, it's excessive to uh, to lock people up uh, who are who are accused of actual like one who were definitely involved in a military coup against the elected government, and two are accused of orchestrating massacres. Like like that like that's just such a weird and like Blinken said that right that they have yeah. a uh, that it's very yeah, worried. I have, I have that uh or I should have, I have that yeah. I can't um, we are deeply concerned by game. growing signs of anti-democratic behavior and politicization of, of the legal system in Bolivia. The Bolivian government should release detainees. Oh, not people. the politicization of the legal system. <laughs> by God. God forbid the legal system would be politicized. I forgot that in the United States, the legal system is perfectly not politicized. <laughs> Pending an independent and transparent inquiry into human rights and due process concerns. I mean, because, you know, th there's such a good history of... Uh, independent and transparent inquiries in this case too well, well it's, it's also it's also bizarre because what they're calling you know politicization well, is just like having laws be enforced against powerful people which to be fair is how we tend to use that term in this country too that like you know that they said like that was the whole excuse for the obama look forward not backward thing with not prosecuting yeah. like cia torturers who'd uh who you know uh, put stuck people's heads in cold water and peeled off their fingernails and shit like that because that would be politicizing the legal system. <laughs> well, the 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 other tension that exists within the libs is that they um, all of a sudden in the last couple of years, whatever they see uh, systemic racism in places where it exists and in places where it probably doesn't exist. Uh, but they see systemic racism everywhere in the United States that they, they see that the, right. the United States criminal justice system is inherently racist and blah, 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 blah. Um, but they don't, they can't see that like they, they don't see that as a politicization of, of the legal system. Um, you know, that they could then turn around and say like this, this, this shit in Bolivia. I mean, the, the Blinken, uh, I, I can't, I can't take him seriously with that name. I mean, he just. I, do you guys see that movie, uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights? I just keep on oh, thinking yeah, yeah. of the Blinken character, the blind one. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> whenever I hear his name, but uh, yeah, like the, the Biden foreign policy, at least so far, is like very, very difficult to distinguish from Trump's, like especially with regards to Latin America. I mean. The, you know, Juan Guaido is still the legitimately elected president of Venezuela. Um, well, he was so charming yeah. with Nancy Pelosi. You know, she she was just yeah. into it. Yeah, <laughs> the biggest fucking clown. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm like legally yeah. bound to to mention this every time I talk about Juan Guaido. That I that I might we have already my might even talked about it the last time I was here that he has a paid full time astrologer that he travels with. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I did not know that. <laughs> I was just Look watching the Reagan's documentary where they interviewed their astrologer. That yes, uh, <laughs> great little great little nugget that I did not know about. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's um, amazing. I mean, the L.A. the L.A. fucking New Age shit. I mean, you could be like a, a a doctrinaire movement conservative like Reagan was, but the New Age shit as an actor will still get you. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, it's amazing. I, yeah. I just want to ask you guys though: Does this sound does this sound politicized, and does this sound um, does this sound unreasonable? Because to me, uh, you know, but the Bolivian uh, Minister of Justice talking about this sounds, or you know, looks like the most rational reason right. for locking somebody up um, that I've ever heard. And I don't even, you know, I'm not even for locking people up on most things. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Sin embargo, eh, yo creo que hay que llamar la atención de todo lo que ya no es atención, es que la atención es una medida excepcional, no debe ser la regla, debe ser la excepción, y lo que buscamos no es una detención de cuatro meses, nosotros lo que estamos buscando es una condena de 30 años, porque acá ha habido masacres sangrientas, acá ha habido eh, familias que han quedado sin padre, eh, madres que han quedado sin hijos, y ha habido, eh, un, eh, en palabras de la CIDH, eh, una masacre sangrienta en el país, en Sencata, en Sacaba, en Montero, en el federal, en el sur de La Paz, y vamos a seguir adelante con los objetivos de la justicia, definitivamente.
últimos cuatro meses son definitiva. Este es un periodo de tiempo que how did this woman yeah. not flee the country like what was what was going through her head i mean i guess maybe she took a cue from uh Venezuela, supposedly the most authoritarian state in the universe, who somehow allows the guy that everyone, you know, the guy that calls himself the president uh, and, and no, like I, half I the he, developed world calls the president to just traipse around and do rallies and shit. Um, no, like, and look, like that, I love that. Like, look, whatever you want to say. And I'm not like, I'm perfectly willing to say that, like, especially after the transition from Chavez to Maduro, that there are plenty of things the Venezuelan government's done, you know, that, that's legitimate to, uh, you know, to, to, to criticize. We can be warts and all about it. But it is hilarious that given the way that they were being portrayed, like as if like Maduro was like running like that, like what was like, you know, the Latin American Stalin, uh, that... They let this guy spend months go around going around to military bases, being like, "Hey, I'm the real president. Follow me," and yeah. just and just did not touch him, did not arrest him. It's just like like yeah, no. It's such a pathetic. Like I loved one of my all time favorite Trump burns was that thing about uh, how uh, Beto uh, about how uh, Juan Guaido Beto of Venezuela. <laughs> Oh, Trump had a way with the Burns, man. He had a way with the Burns. When he called Pete Buttigieg, uh, Alfred E. Newman, and forced Pete Buttigieg to be like, oh, well, I guess I've, I've never heard of that reference. I guess it's like a <laughs> generational thing. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You know exactly what it is. Uh, <laughs> you're a fucking try-hard American millennial. You know exactly what Mad Magazine is. Come on. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I find it very weird. I mean, that because what happened in Bolivia... Contra to what happened in Brazil, in which Brazil was a much more kind of modern coup. It was this sort of judicial coup in which the, you know, the military didn't really intervene. Um, in uh, Bolivia, it was kind of your standard traditional Latin American coup in which the military was like, no, you you got to get out of here. And Evo Morales had to like flee under the cover of night <laughs> and like leave the country. If not, he would have been arrested or worse killed. Um you know, your coup by military coup by any, you know, reasonable interpretation of those words. Uh, to think you could just be like, yeah, I'm just going to live in my house here in Bolivia after doing that while the other guy, while the other side just takes back power. Um, yeah, no, that's that's weird. I, she should have just gone to Miami. She would have been welcomed yeah, with open arms and lived a, lived a great life uh, as a sort of Bolivian expat uh, leader of the opposition to to the mass from Miami. Like, I don't understand why that option was not on the table for her. 